coming up, a very important one for seeding for both of these teams. IGV facing off against Team Empire. IGV currently 5-5 five and five in the groups. Team Empire 5-7. and seven. So IGV with a couple of not as strong matchups to end out the rest of their tournament could be looking to maybe sneak into that upper bracket. Ben, how you doing, my man? You excited to watch these games? What's up? I actually expected both of these teams to be way lower than their, they were in the group. IG Vitality didn't have a good day one, but they were up against pretty tough teams. And Empire, I would say Resolution is a strict upgrade. Um, Shappy, in my opinion, maybe not Meepo-wise, but everything else, I would say. I have to say that that's a large part of the success. Night Stalker gets through. I haven't seen this guy get through. <laughs> Ever. I know, he's just like, he completely dominates. And now two vision-oriented heroes. I mean, granted, Kunkka's pretty good, and uh, I'm sure is going to be able to play well. I'm not sure if it's Roger or Maposhka between the two of them, but still, it feels like it's a lot to give up. Oh. We saw that earlier on in this tournament, I believe, as well. It yep. was VP, right? Mm -hmm. VP, they... Well, firstly, they weren't playing against Night Stalker, I think. Shadow Demon is incredibly difficult to play when you're scared of just dying all the time. Uh, normally, you have you're not you're not that scared, but Night Stalker and Bat Rider like you you can't get lassoed, and Night Stalker also just makes it so much more difficult. I I'm sure they have something up their sleeve, maybe like a SD Luna uh, Ball Strat. Okay, wait. <laughs> um, the thing I'm trying to think of why they would pick Kunkka. The last time we saw it, it got destroyed too, and it's a very... The thing about it is, it is really strong at 5 on 5, I would say, Kuka Shadow Team. That's the one thing that they have uh, that's way better than Night Stalker Batrider. I think, like, 90% of teams here at this tournament would prefer NS Batrider open. Yeah, it feels like it's very... I mean, in a way, Kunkka has AoE damage, but it's also with the X or even with the Shadow Demon uh, control, it's, like, very single target focused. Um, Whereas, like, I, you can build it into more team fight afterwards. Um, I'm looking at the way that IGV play, though, and it feels like they're not going to give them that opportunity to take the fights that they might want. Because they're just always going to be able to have more vision than them. Um, but I guess the other... Is there any other strengths, really, for uh, for uh, Kunkka and Shadow Demon? What else might you pair it with? Well, you have to think about Shadow Demon as opposed to its normal counterpart, I would say, is uh, Oracle. Especially when you're versus a Bat Rider. Mm -hmm. uh, the main thing that Shadow Demon brings is uh, the, the disruption. Both heroes have like pretty decent burst and okay save. Actually, Oracle's way better on the save, but Shadow Demon is way better when you consider disruption. So IG Vitality have banned out two heroes that pair well with the disruption, Luna and Anti-Maze. There are still others. I would say Spectre is one of the most common ones, but I don't believe Spectre's been picked up yet this tournament. Mm -hmm. It is something to consider, though. I actually don't think it's that bad versus our lineup. You don't particularly mind getting lassoed. Yeah, and then it might be a nice way to interrupt that lasso from happening if you can get the jump on somebody. Obviously, later on, Radiance is quite good at being able to interrupt those blink daggers. And normally, if you have a bat rider, you want those other blinks to follow. Um, so seeing that and trying to figure it out, I guess the other question for me is if Team Empire need to go for an, an another illusion-based carry to deal a ton of damage. But there's the opening. We've seen this time and again. Silencer bat rider could be an Alk strat actually. Alk's actually very good with Shadow Demon. And Alk's pretty good versus their hero. You don't care if Night Stalker or Bat Rider jumps you. You're not going to die. They actually don't. Have, their burst is awful right now. So Chemical Rage is really good. Yeah, they've also most likely picked their two supports. No Ancient Apparition as a counter. Not a whole heck of a lot of other ones that would be able to counter out an Alchemist either, I would imagine. Uh, at least to the same extent. But... I mean, the one elk that I remember we had for sure was the newbie accidentally randoming it. But besides also that... also on that LGD pick. Oh, okay. Uh, was it safe lane? Um, remember? 977 GPM? Maybe I uh, cast it with Sheever. Yeah, you're casting with Sheever on that one. Yeah, that was... Uh, that was deliberate. 977? 977. He went aggro try with Avenge. Uh, Morphling's also good, too. We have seen uh, Empire pick Morphling before. I think they're one of the few teams that have. And Resolution, his Morphling is one of the best ones. Top three, I would say. I'm wondering, I don't remember. I remember back when Shadow Demon was getting picked a lot, you could create a replicate of your Morphling illusion that was created by Shadow Demon. I don't know if that got picked out. That. You can't still do it? Okay. You just can't replicate your own controlled Right. Which, that would be kind of an interesting way to do it as well. 
But maybe maybe they're not even going for any of those. But I, I, I'd be pretty surprised if they didn't, considering that they did go for... What did BP do with it? They didn't really do anything. I remember they... Oh, they had anti Mage. That's right. Yeah. Which was banned out in the second phase of this one by IGB. Yeah. And they just got ran at by the Razor. That was... God, that was a painful game to watch. And it does sort of harken back to some of the problems that you run into with this lineup is maybe some damage concerns that you're not going to be able to burst through heroes that are slightly tanky, like Night Stalker. He's kind of buff. You can see him there over there flexing his muscles. Um, other ones, Bat Rider has fairly high strength gain. Could be an issue. I wonder if IG suspect. I mean, FN's also... Can, he's also pretty well known for his Say uh, most of the... Most of the players. Razor. Tough matchup. And this feels like it's sort of doubling down upon that we were talking about. Just get tankier. They're not going to be able to deal with you, maybe. Um, as a response for Empire, like thinking about a high damage mid, maybe, like a, a Quap or a, an OD, or do you not really like that? OD versus Bat's pretty terrible. Quap is also very risky again these silences and picks uh, prefer something a little bit more tanky but it, it all depends on whether or not they want to do like an elk centric strat or a more concentric track i think probably i mean picking up here or next pick relatively the other hero that uh, fn likes to play a lot is invoker you have a lot of set uh, set up for sunstrike kills in that way it might be a bit too slow do you think Versus Night Stalker Bat. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's really tough to play a lot of these heroes versus Night Stalker Bat. It's like the heroes that like require a lot of precise posi pre uh, positioning. It's it's the finesse heroes. You don't really want to. You want heroes that are like very tanky. They have a lot of uh, escape mechanisms and have high amounts of. Aid. You like the Legion and Phantom Lancers. They're both like melee heroes. They're relatively tanky. You the thing about playing versus Night Stalker Bat Rider, you can't avoid getting jumped. Just Play like you're going to get jumped, draft like you're going to get jumped, and be ready to fight at any time. Like, if your invoker gets lassoed at the start of the fight, and you can't get disruption off, you just lose the fight. He's mm -hmm. just going to die. He might have Lincoln Spear, but even that's not going to really save him that much. So, like, heroes like Phantom Lancer and Legion Commander who have innately tanky abilities and talents serve their purpose much. Well, they do end up taking that Phantom Lancer you're talking about. Uh, lots Phantom, of different yeah, ways. Lancers. I think it was, it was first phased by Secret earlier. Really? First phase, I think, I believe, against Ichi, was it? And they won with it. Isn't that insane, the way that Dota works? Like, the meta evolves. CM only got, like, picked in the second day after 100 other heroes or something crazy like that. And she was, like, the most picked at Kiev. And now you have PL that's it was basically not picked the entire year. And now he's been all over the place. All teams are taking him at every phase. Yeah, it's, it's a little... Yeah, they did lose first, a, first phase PL. They try to do a Pugna strat. Well, IGV are going to ban out the Slark right now. That's a Slark. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds. PL also doesn't care too much about Razor. I like that too. Way too much about it. It's also hard to just target the right illusion. Yeah. Timber ban there. Might have been another one of those that causes a lot of issues. So do you think that uh, Empire has solved some of those damage issues? Do you think that they have it at all? you think that they have enough? I don't think they have damage issues. Okay. It's more team fight issues right now. LC, Phantom Lancer, Shadow Demon are all pretty awful at team fight. So they're not looking at team fight. Which is a little bit worrisome because that means you're going to be like split pushing a skirmishing, which is very difficult. I guess... IG Vitality's team fight's not particularly like Bat Rider Sonic is okay, but it's not like they can blow people up in like half a second. They don't have anything to combo well with. They might need. Well, Marana is the last pick. Maybe they'll just be able to leap away from all the trouble coming their way. Assuming it's going to be an FN and a safe lane PL. Do you like that? I mean, I guess that puts resolution on one of those more uh, split pushing oriented. Depends videos. on what's mid. If Razor's mid, I think you put Murana there. Okay. If it's not Razor mid, then you can put P. PL matches that very well versus most of the range heroes, but just not. So IG Vitality, I would say they need some burst. Burst heroes in the. 
DK, DK is not bursty, but he does provide, I guess, a little bit more team fight. It is a decent tower hitter. Did not expect that from Sakata. I don't think it matches up very well versus uh, either PL or Mana. I would think they either want burst to aid in July on the bat, bursting down heroes, or they would want some AUE so they can actually fight and deal better with the PL. Like they banned out Timbersaw. Timbersaw is, I don't, I would, I, I would actually not say it's a hard counter to PL, but it makes PLs like much more. Okay. Well, it wasn't PL like you said. It's going to be the Dragonite. Um, we've been seeing a little bit of a, a comeback of that with Super playing it a lot. Not the lowercase Super that we got in this game, but the uppercase Super who plays mid. Uh, and it feels like that is kind of overlapping somewhat in the position of the the Razor as well, where it's that you know frontline takey hero to hit the towers, but maybe double the fun. They'll be able to make it work. So, drafting. The draft is done. Do you have sort of a, a favorite between them? Is Batrider, Night Stalker that strong of a matchup that you think that they're going to be able to take over the game? I think PL has... Uh, there's not that many counters to PL. Most of their heroes struggle to uh, to kill them. They don't have... They, they can't clear the illusions very quickly. I, I think they can pressure him in lane. But I think I would favor Empire's lane up. I'm a slight bit of a... Okay. I don't think he's like the, one of the worst heroes in the... I mean, clearly not if they're first phasing him and he ends up being able yeah, to... Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think he's that bad. I think he's like... He's like middle of the pack. He's like 50th percent. The thing about it is like picking him late in the draft, I think, is just really good once you see the... A lot of the support... Brutal, savage, deal. ranked. All right, well, early movements out. Maposhka and Super are going to run into each other. We head out. There was a ward placed down fairly deep from the Radiant, keeping eyes over that shrine, and I think it just barely has vision of the rune. Maybe maybe it's not quite there, but give some decent vision there for the Radiant team. So we'll be then PL safe lane. Yeah, the other day we saw uh, Marana go for a Diffusal Blade early on and trying to take that out of the mid roll for Marana. Um, actually, it might have been uh, Forev on the off lane, but in oh, your Cicada. eyes... Cicada. Cicada? Yeah, okay. Cicada won. Uh, no defensive versus these sort of heroes. Uh, he does have a pretty decent front line. They have the PL, uh, who is really strong. They have the defensive abilities from Shadow Demon, and I like that they have the double save. They have the LC to help out the Shadow Demon in case he gets lassoed, and then they have a Shadow Demon to help out LC uh, in case they get, uh, in, t in case he gets lassoed, she gets lassoed rather. So they have Disruption and press the attack respectively to help out. And I don't know, Angel is a really good bat though. Yeah. I, the the good bat rider players they don't struggle at all versus heroes like Oracle um, and Shadow Demon. So it's just very hard overall to counter bat. Yeah, particularly, like you said, if they know what they're doing. And in July, I mean, the entire time that IGB has been an organization, they've been playing Batrider with him pretty much. That's uh, pretty much the entirety. You just described his career. <laughs> in July's <laughs> career. What a guy. That's good, though, that he can play Bat at such a high level. What's the hero that you want your offlaner? Believe it or not, there are some offlaners that can play that well. Hmm. It's, it's just that it's super special hero. Right different than most others. Uh, Ghost Stick was able to pull the creep wave past, so he's going to get an early almost level 2 as Resolution actually taking a lot of these stacks from in July, who's kind of bullying him back a little bit as well. They do have Shadow Demon and Kunk in the area, and they'll try and go for a disruption here into a torrent play. Maybe it is going to connect and a decent little bit of damage, but he doesn't have Firefly. He's getting blocked in a little bit. He made the round of the corner, though, and in July will back out. Torrent nerf. Oh. That might have been a kill a couple patches ago. Yeah. PL's damage is ridiculous. He has 70 base damage. <laughs> that highest nuts. in the game. It's like, that bat rifle is 41. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, he's level 2. Oh, you're in the clear. I'm sure there's some rhyme, rhyme you can have there. It's like, what the hell does the rhyme go? B 
beer after liquor. Wait, liquor <laughs> after beer, you're in the clear or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Level two, you're you're no fool. That doesn't rhyme. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> At least your cast are not a poet. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't know it. Okay, well, two minutes. The regen rune is up on the top. Uh, Dogfight is going to come in and see if he can contest that one as well. Although FN already in the area. Dogfights, does he get there in time? Wait a m No, no. can happen. He does break it. Didn't even use it. Yeah. So, uh, mid lane matchup, we've seen a little bit of wrapping around and, and things happening with. You know, Shadow Demon coming in to contest for the rune. Uh, but it feels like a lot of the action is sort of up top here, where Mapushka and Roger are trying to zone out the bat. Is this that big of a deal for in July? He's used to it. Bat Riders, especially if you've played it this long, you're just always used to it. He played it when the tri lane was harder. This guy's just been... He, it's not a problem. He can always stack. He's think he's going to get this tri stack off? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Does indeed. Good. Level two. Two, you're out of the blue. <laughs> no. We'll keep trying. We'll get there eventually, I'm sure. We gotta go to there's some things you can do like rhyme zone or whatever, and then it will do it for you. Ooh, look at this though, Roger. Maybe trying to get into range. If he could get an X off with maybe an arrow, it's a hard one to make happen. Hard kill to find. I don't know if it's going to actually work out. Um, with level 2 going to be up now on Night Stalker, though, in that 4-minute mark, does he try and roam in and kill off FN, do you think? Or can you maybe make something happen bottom? Where do you see the Night Stalker going in the first night time? I would like to see them kill Ghost Dick. He doesn't have Presti attack, so he can't get the Void off of him. He also can't get the, the Arcane Curse off. He can get linked up and just die. And it's about to hit night time, so it's very unlikely that he will actually see he does have that Berserk reward. Okay, no. Oh, and a haste in bottom. If they had vision of that, they might have gone for it. Ghost Stick. They are going to find it, Dogfights, but I don't know if he can really run him down. First Blood, actually in the mid lane, they were able to take down Sakata, and Dogfight's not going to be able to run down the Legion instead. Yeah, it wasn't able to. Oh, a big kill, though, nonetheless. I mean, you look at that First Blood. Plus, it's a kill on the enemy mid laner. Dogfights now is coming in to see if he can mess with FN. He is slowed down with the Void, and in July makes the rotation as well. They can't leap in one second. Is going to be able to get out in the disruption, keeping him away. Dogfight still chasing, but is going to be forced back. And now with Roger showing up as well, they might be able to catch on to in July. I don't know if this is going to pull him back in time. The arrow does connect. A good bit of damage coming out. Is it enough? The right clicks are there, and they find another one. Dogfight's forced to run away. Just mayhem in this mid lane. Perfect positioning by Empire Supports. Firstly, to catch out the Dragon Knight, and then he was there to disrupt right before he was going to get like burned down by the Firefly. I, I do like uh, Angelai's rotations too. He like goes into the mid lane very often. He does AFK farm to blink very often. Resolution will be off to the races. I don't know if he particularly fancies the Soul Ring build that we've seen uh, from some of the other PLs. I think he just likes the standard Akila. But after that, the build's very, very, uh, V-A-R-Y. Yeah. It's sad to sound It's all good, I'm sure. You can see him, though. They want to try and put that pressure onto Reza a little bit. Night Stalker, only level 2 for himself, so won't have the silence, and... Resolution just gonna walk away. FN finds another kill on the DK mid while they're ganking Resolution. This should not be happening. And Roger now gonna throw out the torrent. Thinking about trying to turn this again on the dogfights. Good bit of damage coming through as well. They have super in the area. Arcane curses down and Roger just going to fall. Plus two going to the silencer. I don't know how FN just keeps on outplaying Sakai here. But they had three heroes there. Okay. They had three heroes then. They have two setups for there. One is Shadow Demon Disruption. They don't even have the Soul Catcher though. And then they have the uh, Kuka X Torrent or just There is a lot of magic burst coming out from this struggle a lot versus that. Oh. Dogfight's able to stay alive by virtue of raindrops right there. Rezo even popped the wand to get the little bit of extra mana. Not quite a kill. They decide to go again after popping the shrine immediately. Postcard already had the observer ward. Woo. 
And FN is actually going to TP up top uh, with Roger coming in. They're going to find the Silencer, and X Torrent connects onto him. Arrow is there. And as you mentioned, that easy setup is helping to accentuate FN's early lead. They have to know that they have a reward, but normally you don't expect it. Seven minutes in is general. There's generally a dead time in between the Zev rewards, like five to seven. So it's usually a very good time to gank, especially with Knight. But they were way too prepared. Not going to again. They put in the exact right place and setting up again on oh. July. And July is going to die again. Pulling him back in. They got him trapped up, and he is going to fall mid lane. They're at least getting a little something for this. Sakata dealing damage to that tower and actually is going to stun FN. They bring in dog fights as well. He gets the long duration silence because it's nighttime. Void already used as well. Does he get out of there, FN? The damage is actually going to be dealing over time, but with the bottle, he should be okay. In the meantime, Paparazzi takes down Ghost Tick in the bottom lane. There's just action all over the place, and this tower is taking a good bit of damage. Yeah, their cores are getting a lot, though, on the side of Empire. LC is not the best in CS, but is actually even with the Batrider. And Batrider did neutrals, so those creeps in the lane are worth a little bit more. However, Ghost Egg is going to lose. Torrent just a little bit off the mark there. And that tower down makes things a little bit scary for the Legion as well. I mean, it's 5-2, to two, as you mentioned. It's still very even in terms of net worth. I mean, is, is PL sort of allowed to farm uh, freely? Like, yeah. Empire very happy with this? Definitely. He's he's the one that you want to be really big. He's going to be the one that's out in front, maybe baiting out Batrider. You need him to be very tanky. And keep in mind that his farm is going to be amplified because he does have a Shadow Thief on his team, so he can make more illusions. The super is getting destroyed. IG Vitality don't really have a good place to farm right now. I think the only thing that's going well for IG Vitality is that Major Commander's He's not gonna have a blink for some time, but I think that's a uh, that's something very small in the grand scheme. Rezo going for treads, my man. There you go. I, I know MP likes to feel the bots, but I way prefer the treads build. More special oriented. In this game. Yeah, it's just, I view him as a fighter. If you're gonna split push, you might as well just pick anti. And he farms against him. Building him this way allows your team to play way differently because you have a super peak a frontliner that's very difficult to kill. It's pretty difficult, pretty unusual to have that. Okay, this resolution is going to get ran at right now, but already the TPs are going to start to show up in mass. Three heroes in the area. Now they caught the X on the Sakata. The Dragonite is going to be in trouble as they tried to pull him back in July, dies over to the west side, and they've been able to catch the big bad DK who's starting to fall now quite heftily. And it looks like he might get the kill under Roger, but still, that's two cores for the price of the Kunkka. Can you see how many people TP'd up top? Yep, that was a four person TP. That's the thing, they, they try to kill a PL and you can kind of foresee it's a bad omen for what's going to happen I think later on the team. They're going to try and go on PL and they're not going to be able to get anything. Batrider actually committing for the drums first. He does want to be a little bit more active early. I think this is necessary for them. If you farm for 5-10 minutes, I think the cores of Empire are just going to I would say outscale you quicker. Like they, They're going to hit the peak a lot faster than IGP. You don't want to give them... PL's supposed to be weak at this point in the game. So is Murana. They're like so-so, I would say, super early. But when, after they get their first and second item, it's a lot more difficult. Whereas DK and Razor without items, still fine. Paparazzi doing his own thing on the bottom lane. Going for the hood first. There's a lot of physical. My goodness, really? Just picking them off yet again. Super goes down in the top lane. It's again, sort of one of these situations where, like, Resolution is alone up here with a Batrider silencer, and he somehow manages to just kill him off. But, happens. The Doppelganger is really useful here. It dispels uh, all the Napalm stacks and the Arcane Curse. Be in a lot of trouble. They did a good job of being able to lay out the silence, which kept him alive against the arrow that was coming in. Now, Paparazzi trying to save the day. If he could kill up Empire here, this would be a really big secured kill. And FN trying to run away manages to find the torrent without any other setup. But Super isn't enough to kill off FN. He does have leap off cooldown in one more second, and he's going to live on 19 HP. They also get the duel now onto the Night Stalker. Damage into the favor. Actually, not so. End up losing that guy. Super trying to see if he can kill off Ghost Stick as well. Quite going to happen. Oh, man. Ben, I don't know. The, these fights have just been so weird and chaotic. 
They're not going to find a ghost stick, it looks like. He's heading off around to the west. They even blew a scan for that. I guess scans aren't that big. Wait, uh, craziness all over <laughs> the map. Well, I was going to say that the one nice thing that we can say right now about IGV is that Paparazzi is having a good game for himself as well. Uh, it's obviously a very different type of carry than a PL. Um, how do you feel like those two match up against each other? Is there any timing where Razor is like stronger than PL? Right now. Okay. Maybe for the next 10 minutes or so. He's also, he can counter the LC a lot. Like if you get the link on him uh, right after he duels someone else or before he duels you, you're going to be in a pretty good spot. Uh, and LC is going to be the majority of the physical damage, I would say. So he's the one that threatens Razor the most because he did go through it. Look at this. Do you, do you see what's happening here? Dogfights just ended up going down. I think, is he going to end up dying to the big 7 HP? What? Oh, Dogfight's barely able to survive that. And now more damage up top. Roger's going to get brought down by in July. This game is insanity. Yeah. Can't even get a catch a breath, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, first game of the day for us. It's turned out to be a good one so far. Um, he talked a little bit about that hood build early on. Uh, we saw that Razor really didn't take much damage in that last fight, but he's also not really dealing out a ton of great damage yet. And uh, I guess until like they start getting lassos on targets, it's going to be hard for them to force the issue. Once he has Yasha, I think he'll be fine. Okay. They, they don't have a great way to get out of the static. Aside from Leap, I would say. The doppelganger is not great. It's passable, I would say. So he just needs some damage. Disruption doesn't break the link. So defensively disrupting a target that's linked is probably the worst case scenario open fire. And once he gets level 10, that 15 agility is a big damage buff. So I think that's why you can go a defensive in July. I'm gonna run into that. Roger. They pull him back and just... To, actually, they might even save that, so they'll have Lasso again for the next fight that they want to take. And with the drums completed, as you mentioned, that Agi talent there for the Razor, it might be time to try and take a couple more of these engagements. Yeah, they, they need to keep PL down, I would say, either by coming, forcing the fight right now uh, or picking up the rest of the team and easier to handle him and annihilate his team. So... The supports on the side of Empire are so poor. Uh, Shadow Demon, and most notably, just bare bones items. Kunkka also pretty poor. They've been getting a lot of kills, but the network has been going on in uh, to their cores. They actually do need items on a Shadow Demon too to deal with a bad rider. So you want Glimmer, I would say, in this. Area. Oh, Ghost Stick too. He's only a hundred gold away from Blink and. He will be found and killed. Also, PL, he's heading back up towards the north, and he doesn't have a TP. They're running in there with a haste run on Sakata, and they will find resolution, it looks like. He'll have a doppelganger to try and escape from it for the moment, but in a lot of trouble. And Injali actually ends up getting taken out by FN in the meantime, and static linking for the moment, trying to bring him down. Sakata is taking a hell of a lot of damage from that. Diffusal Blade came out from the PL, and he has to back out of this for the moment. Armlet toggling while the urn charge is on him. Not the easiest thing in the world. That was some sick illusion micro coming out. Rezo just baited him so hard. It's really well done. I totally thought that he was dead with all five of them descending, but yeah, in July ended up getting picked off by FN. I think that's that's why you want the tanky build too. Like he he doppelgangered and then he he they breathed fire and there was still like they couldn't actually clear out the illusion so they didn't know which one was him there were like seven or eight illusions and he just completed his diffusal blade and just destroyed them also because dk's a little bit he needs uh once he gets level 12 he can he might be looking at a meal near build later too considering the lineup yeah and in july now is gonna have his blink dagger for the next fight um Again, if they have a lot of PO illusions, it's not going to be the easiest thing still for them to find it. But they can pick off, pick off, pick on all the others though. Murana doesn't have a defensive item, so she's prime target. I would say she's the easiest target. Legion Commander's all right, uh, I would say, but I, th I don't think the Legion Commander's going to be that that big of a threat. Legion Commander's still zero damage. You're not particular. You just want to keep FN. Yeah. Rezo to be your problem. 
So we see the movement now with the smoke coming in from Empire. Are Dogfights and Super Ninja like going to run into him first? If they find the Razor, how can they actually blow him up in time? They have a lot of damage, but he is very tanky. He has the hood. They do reveal themselves now as Paparazzi just a little bit too quick. The rest of IGV is going to be coming in now. Resolution trying to chase him down, but they haven't been able to stand a Paparazzi. Dealing a little bit of damage. They have the duel. The ghost ship is going to come in, though. A good bit. They are going to be able to kill off Paparazzi, but can they take down the rest of them? FN getting ran down by dogfights and Super. The right clicks are there, but another X pulls him back. In July is dead, and still Resolution doing all of the damage with those illusions. Roger in trouble as well. Lordy Lordy, Sakata standing tall, takes down two in turn. So the final tally ends up being a three for two exchange. Razor's just not taking it. I can't believe they just missed it. That would have been crazy. Also, it was a curious time for IG Vitality. They smoked without having uh, their global silence up. Yeah. And if they global silence right as soon as they get the Razor, Razor actually just runs straight to his team and then the fight becomes a lot different because he can actually get his spells off in the fight. But he did get his hood off, he did get his eye of the storm, but still died in the duel and wasn't able to actually do anything with the static link. Yeah, and it, it looked for a little while like it was going to go quite well for Empire, but I think that the boat buff had started to wear off by the end of that fight, and then yep. Sakata just cleaned up as well. So, only a thousand gold lead right now in this game, 9 to 15, but it is into the favor of IGV ever so slightly. I does feel like that's a tenuous lead, though. W do things start changing around the more items, like the PL of PL scale? PL is way more than... way better than IG in this game. Unless Dragon, I can get rid of it. Uh, he is going for Shadow Blade, and then he's going to have to go for BKB, and after that, he can do some damage once he hits level 18. So, uh, I still think Empire has a little bit of lead, but Dragonite... Looks like he is going to be a problem. I thought he was going to go for the Blink Dagger and then not have that much damage and just be more control, but now that he has the extra attack speed from Shadow Blade and the extra damage, I think that he might be able to pick off. I think he sees it. Oh no. Super. Another uh, duel up here. It's not going to be damage, but it will be a uh, mobile drop? Do they? Alright, well, he doesn't get out, and they don't quite kill off Maposhka either. I think he thought that, like, Batrider or someone else would be but Batrider still on his team. If, if Batrider were there and the global came out, I think two heroes would have died. Maybe they can find this kill onto FN now. Marana is there. Paparazzi stealing the damage. Leap is down for three more seconds. The right clicks, the flame break hits, and FN also hits the ground. But it's the tier one tower that Empire want to focus on now. And it, until that global is back up, can IG Vitality really fight, or do they need to sort of be a little more careful? They still have Bat Night Stalker, so they can still jump uh, jump anyone that they really want to. Uh, so Rezo hasn't gone for any defensive items, really. So he's he's been able to get away with this, like, very... I, I wouldn't say it's like Class Kennedy because he did go for Treads, but it's still pretty light on the HP. And he hasn't he hasn't died yet. He's 5-0-4. Uh, and now I think he's just going to vault ahead of most other people, especially now that he has his mates. Some more dual damage is actually going to be gained for Ghost Stick as well. So even though they're sort of trading towers, it's not exactly easy. And LTP is coming in. Roger is there. They're able to get the stun. X Torn, and actually the boat was able to get off as well. So they're going to be much more survivable than they might have been otherwise. Sakata dropping low. He is going to die. A double for resolution. He took down the Night Stalker up top. Takes down the Dragon Knight in the bottom lane. And now Paparazzi also going to be fully wrapped around upon going to be killed off. A triple kill for Resolution, and you said it. He is going to start taking off. Yep, they... Looks like they didn't particularly respect the PL and the picks, I would say. Like, Dragonite... Dragonite is also very tanky, too, so even if he does survive versus the PL, he's going to lose all his mana. He's not going to be able to do that much later on. Though. But he's going, for, he's going to go for BKB next. I talked about that earlier on Dragonite, but as I mentioned before, that means that he can't deal with the PL for like an... See. You look at the PL's uh, stat talent build now, he ended up going for the plus eight stats instead of the cooldown reduction. So wanting to really just, you know, hammer that point home of dominating right now. Just right click. They can't stop him. Like even if they lasso him, I think if they lasso him and even pull him in, maybe they win the fight. But if there's a disruption or a press the attack or a boat, they will. And he also has leap, leap attack speed, too. It's like a lot of the, these small things that just buff his uh, right-click weight, press the attack, leap, uh, 
Shadow Demon, Soul Catcher, the boat that can just allow him to fight. I don't know. Rezo's, uh, <laughs> Rezo's gonna have a good game for the rest of the game. <laughs> Rezo's carrying. Uh, saw that movement down there. They're trying to catch Sakata, but he did back out the sort of safe route, which meant that they did not catch him, Empire. And instead, it's just going to be Mposhko picks up a rune. And as far as IGB are concerned, do you just try and like find pickoffs on anybody not named Resolution? It's tough because they they aren't actually seeing that many of their heroes. Like they used Darkness last time. Nicer got picked off when he while he uses Ultimate last time. So they don't know where Empire is right now. They definitely need to get pickoffs right now. It's not a question of who they should pick, kill, but how many. They have. Okay. The answer is a lot. <laughs> you need to kill a lot of people. Yeah, the answer is a lot. Like, even the LC, who was having a really tough time, just got two dual kills, almost has blade mail. So, I also think the Razor needs armor badly. Not having armor on Razor uh, versus if you get dueled or uh, with, versus the PL that's just right clicking you with the Fusal Blade, you're going to have a bad day. Alright, there were able to get their Shadow Demon out. Injali made the long travel down to the bottom lane to see if they could find it, but doesn't end up working. Batrider trying to get towards that four staff that might allow him to pull somebody a little bit further out of position, but it is still, for the moment, Empire, the ones who are able to take the stronger team fights, even if they don't feel like they have to, which is something else to consider. You know, they're around 3,000 experience ahead, and PL still has room to grow. Yep. They also haven't come with a global particularly. The one time that used it when he was almost certainly dead, and they haven't been able to like blink lasso into global and just the start of the fight. Now that now that PL is really big, with you know, he can just be at the tower and not really. Good. They can just send an endless wave of illusions, with disruption, school style. Batrider, his cooldown on TP is still six seconds away, and the rest of IGB are just so scared right now. I'm sitting inside the base. Uh, four minutes until nighttime, although dog fights, and uh, Darkness is actually on cooldown for 70 seconds as well. Which does mean it's going to be a little while before the team fight is perfectly in their favor. But four step done for in July. The pieces are starting to coalesce and come together for IGB. Yeah, they want to fight with the BKB timings. They've been losing all the team fights, even though I would put their lineup a little bit stronger in team fight. Uh, with the vision category and the global silence being the trump card. I probably shouldn't say trump card anymore. That has such a negative connotation. <laughs> <right now>. It <laughs> is. <laughs> with the card, the, the good card, we'll call it that. The Ace of Spades. I, the Ace of Spades. Is That's that my singing voice, by the way. Okay. Do you have a... Uh, I wish I did. I should come up with one. You're soothing closer for me to see. In a good way. I appreciate that. That's good. In a good way is important. Oh my god. FN does not care about a global silence. He just walks away. Super's been a little bit afraid of things happening to him. And with good reason. Um, he just oh, ran it. It's... It shouldn't have... Their, their lineup. Their lineup is meant to get the jump and not have... Like, that's the opposite of what your lineup should, should do, is having global blown defensively for support. Their lineup is supposed to be very offensive, high firepower at the start of the fight. You get a link at the start of the fight, you get a lasso, you kill one or two heroes. But that still has not happened for them yet. And, I mean, they've been farming a lot with paparazzi, but has it really amounted to that much for them? Like, I, I, I know that he needs farm this game, but I think his team suffered a lot while uh, he was by the Stormy Nations, for example. Yeah. Going for, like, the Sanji and Yasha build, you'd love to be able to get into the fights, but it's, I, I guess it really does come back to what you're talking about. Like, it's all about making sure that you can take fights with the BKBs, but even with they, when they get them, does that really change the dynamic of this game that much? That all of their Tier 2 towers are almost down, and, like... It, Empire almost into the next set of items. But just look at his build, though. Hood and BKB. That's no damage. And yeah. also, your team fight is not good with Hood, because they don't actually, like, a lot of times they don't focus early on. 
help him to kill a team. They like killed Sakata first, and a lot of team fights he has four deaths. So he's building Tinky, but he's not actually doing a job of being up there in the front. Whereas Rezo, he doesn't really have that many Tinky items, but he's doing the job of being in the front line and being super annoying, and no one can really touch him. Whereas Paparazzi, he has defensive items, but he's still not running up there. It's kind of like a Bristleback who builds all these defensive items, but just sits in the back and just waiting for an opportunity because he's scared that he's going to die. I think that's kind of how the Razor's playing. Or he possibly could have gone for a, a more team fight item build. I think Mech Razor is way out of popularity right now, but this game, I think it could have been good for him. It's a similar price to Hooded Defiance. You can still buy the ring for the region in the lane, and it helps out your entire team in case they don't actually go on you. And it gives you armor, which you desperately need for the Phantom Lancer. I think it takes a lot of the boxes uh, that he needs, whereas Hood, if you're already BKB, who cares? It's, it's just a waste of 2,000 gold items. Yeah. Well, and it definitely feels like this was never the ultimate goal, or at least it probably shouldn't have been, and things went wrong, and then sort of you have to take your items that you, you sort of need at that point, but now it's also going to be a PL with a BKB there, and Manta Style done. He is so farmed. Resolution, ready to battle if they want to take it to him, and... I don't know if they know about the BKB. He's always one item ahead, too. Like, yeah. he had Diffusal before anyone else had their big item. He has uh, Manta before they had their BKBs. Now that they have their BKB, he has their BKB. He has his BKB, and they don't have, actually have any damage to deal with him. So he's, like, one damage item up on all the other cores, which is a really big deal. I but it's nighttime. They just popped a... I mean, they just dropped a Sentry Ward and immediately de-warded the... Uh, one that was dropped down. Sakata, is he going to get scouted? Maposhka heads off to the side. They're able to find one stun onto him, but immediately press the attack off. They drop the Global Silence. Can they take down any of these heroes, though? Resolution is just going to start doing so much damage there. Godlike streak for him already to start the fight. Several BKBs popped, and with that, Empire decided to back out, at least for the moment. They managed to pull back in the PL. This would be big, but no, they get the X. They pull him back away. Doppelgangers before the arrow, but they will still find that kill. Two now down for Empire. And it looks like Roger will live. Can Empire clean up with FN is the answer. Yes, Manta jumps away. The dual victory ghost stick makes it happen. IGV, they still end up losing three. The thing about Nice Sucker is I think you always have a chance to win a team fight because your initiation is going to be stronger, but... The Global Silence came out after the Presti attack, so Shadow Demon was just freely running away for the fight. Uh, that was not a good initiation for IGV. They probably could have killed one or two supports at the immediate start of the fight. They also didn't catch, kill Kuka before he was able to get his boat off. And then PL, he cast a BKB, but the downside about BKB is that Razor was able to latch onto him. And then he had to run away like five seconds into his BKB because the static link was on, on top of the PL. I don't actually know if PL can do that much damage through static. I think he's actually maybe one of the heroes that can. There's very few heroes that can actually do damage like if you get full static. Like you still get the defusal burn and right. you still propagate illusions, which is not that bad. I think Ursa is also a good example of a hero that can do a ton of damage even through, um, even through static link because the three swipes, even if you're in negative damage, you still static link. Yeah. Uh, Poposhka maybe getting a little bit too big for his britches there, although that being said, they have been able to find yet another. Roger gets the press the attack to keep him alive, and with the boat coming through, they're still not finding a kill. Um, Roger's just going to TP away, and now they find the duel. The blade mill is there as well, and Dog fights in trouble. They haven't been able to kill him off yet, so won't get the duel damage. Might, in fact, even end up falling themselves. So with Legion dead, and maybe soon to be more, it's too gone for Empire. Not bad at all for the price of a bat. Don't think they saw that Solar Crest on him. A lot of people favor the Solar Crest over the Axe build. And especially when there's Duel out. And it's, it's definitely saved his life there. Big stuff indeed. So now PL needs the Lincoln Spear. The reason I think they didn't completely crush that top fight was because he got linked. Now he's going Lincoln Spear. He could be a Lincoln Spear. Pretty much makes him immune to... Static link, although there is a rare case where you can get last. So. There is also a Lincoln Sphere on FN, so do you think we see Resolution be the one to siege the high ground, or do you think it's more likely to just have FN up there hitting it eventually? I think both are fine. Resolution is more tanky, but he's not ranged. I think it's kind of just play it by ear. There's going to be fights taken outside of base because, because they can't just farm their way to victory. PL did go for Maelstrom next. 
the anti PL. Razor, is he. What's he gonna go for? I think if he had Mjolnir too, that's actually not that bad. Mjolnir and Razor? Alright. It looks like he's going Shiva's at least for now. Shiva's is good. It's because he didn't have any armor. Right. If he had armor, perhaps he could have looked into a Maelstrom, but because he doesn't have any armor, I think it's a fine build. Yeah. So, Roshan gonna be taken out by Vitality. It's nighttime, but they're, they're scared. This is bad. Now, they do have Global up again, but the actual thought of going in and trying to contest that seems like it might end in tragedy for IGV. And, well, actually, it's going to be Empire heading out before Roche is dead. They scout out Super, and with that, Silencer is gone. 45 seconds, no Global. Oh, no, and they found, I, they found in July as well. He's going to be brought down. He doesn't have buyback either. That's 52 seconds without a bat rider. Yep, I think. <laughs> oh, the gold no. lead is really close, but I think just momentum wise, hero matchup wise, uh, IG might only stand very little chance. Well, 14 to 25, but more importantly, it is high ground being siege, and actually passively the. Batrider was able to reestablish buyback gold, so if they wanted to bring him back into the fight, they actually could at this point. Seven seconds until Silencer is up, and the Tier 3 tower, they're going to have to wait for the next round of creeps before they go. Do you buy back to try and defend this? No. Well, it looks like they're actually not even going to try and make the effort to push for it. Empire still need a secure Roche. I think without Roche down, uh, IG Vitality still have a chance, but it's looking pretty grim. I think, like, the... This match, of course, is becoming more apparent. It was pretty apparent in the game, let's say, but... Dragon Knight actually opting to not complete the Mjolnir as well. He's going for the AC instead. AC is uh, better defensively, and it's better on B uh, in BKB Ward. Seems like it's going to have this. Emitter has a BKB coming up. Like... Marana is not going to go for one. We can have, what, like, four heroes with BKBs? I think that class of us is, like, BKB war. Yeah, definitely. The other thing we've got now is that 120 gold per minute talent for the Dragon Knight. So this AC actually might be able to come out a decent clip. Should be pretty hefty. Yeah. Uh, FN already has his level. That one's really good. Look at his damage right now. He, this, well, he has a DD also. Yeah, but still, 460 is ridiculous. Even without DD, he'd still be hitting for, what, like almost 300? That's, yeah. That's really high. I do like Murata's damage now. They're, they are pretty incredible. And I, I think because her damage house was so good, the Scepter build is... You often question whether or not it was worth it. Okay, well, here they go. They need just... If they kill Razor here, I don't actually, can they really kill Razor? I love this, by the way. Super is, like, out of the base. He, he doesn't want to be there because if he gets picked off, it's just done. So he's going to stay over there in global when they call and otherwise push the lane. Yeah, they need this T3 down. T3's pretty low. But if IG Vitality just set up their base, PL is still going to get it. So Shiva's not quite up yet. The AC is not quite up yet. IG Vitality need like five minutes of base huddling so they can wait out the Aegis and get their two big items. But with the advent of the night, oh, rather close. Uh, they didn't use Lasso, so that was just the four staff to break it. And now Empire posturing to push back in towards mid now with a decent sized creep wave. They're going to send in those illusions and already start spamming on them. God, this is just so frustrating. Getting the mana burn going and oh, resolution there. They take down the tower, back out together, and Empire, if they want to, they can keep the pressure going or they can just back out yet again. At the very least, like we were talking about, the Mjolnir, or rather, Maelstrom from the Dragonite is helping to clear through those illusions and creeps. They can take out the shrines and then just play a slow and steady. Because they're pretty close up. I was themselves too. KB for the Sooners. Sing LG. What's Legion? Legion! LC. LC, LGD. Tiny LD. <laughs> you know what's funny about that, too? Lyrical Dota LD. There you go. Look at that. No one called it. 
No, nobody does. <laughs> There's LB. People call uh, wow. like Koopa's color light blue. Oh yeah, light blue. There you go. I never understood that. Like when people call it, it's a Dota one. My thing. pink player is feeding. It's like it's a very Dota one thing. I don't know. I think they were. Uh, is I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It's just I think most of the players Dota say. Yeah. You know, you play Dota one if you call players by the color. That's like the Jeff Foxworthy stand-up comedy. You're you're a redneck if you. Well, back to the world at hand. <laughs> We've got a PL now sitting at almost level 20 talent for himself. Evasion or magic resistance, and also 20,000 net worth. So about 1,000 net worth per level. It's great. It's wonderful. Resolution is having a fine old time. I wonder what's going to take up to evasion magic resistance. There's a lot of magic damage. Yeah. Probably say... Uh, I don't know. Evasion is pretty important, too. Especially when you're... Especially when you want to block, like... Or dodge like Maelstrom hits. Tough call. I guess if you're going for Butterfly, probably magic resistance. I'm just looking at this army. They send it right at Super. It is a like decent amount of experience that keeps on coming back in. And the global, it's there. It's been able to catch on to one. They take down Maposhka. Not a bad pickoff to start it. Static Link now there for Rezo as well. The arrow going to be off the mark. They jump forward. They do. He's got a lot of armor, though. They're not able to bring down the Razor as of yet. Can they kill him off? No! He's going to be able to live through it. And Ghostic now also in a little bit of trouble. The last hit comes through. Sakata with the double kill. Armlet tugging for all he's worth and able to fourth step away. Two gone. Dogfight just going to Batman himself over the ridge. Oh, my God. And IGV hitting it good. What? Oh wow, Makoshka was so far out, and they lost the gem. He, he played super well the first 30 minutes of the game, but that was a huge one. I thought they were going to be able to end the game off of that. They just needed like one clean fight, but they also they also hesitated a lot on the push. Uh, Resolution was close to his Lincolns, and um, Ghost Stick was close to his BKB, but was it actually worth it that they waited for those items? They didn't, weren't even able to complete the Lincolns in time, and in the meantime, you have the Chivas, which was a big difference maker in that fight, as they were all trying to berserk down the Razor and the AC on Dragon Knight, that completely turned the game around. So, they were in a position to close out the game now, I would say, is pretty, pretty close. The big one for me is this AC done on the Dragon Knight, thinking about you know, the way in which the Ghost Stick was so close to being able to blow up that Razor with the help from the rest of his teammates. And that's just not going to be as viable anymore with all of this armor that's going to be on these heroes. They need a way to deal with a Solar Crest, too. Having a Solar Crest it is hugely problematic. The cores are just not that far. Kuka needs, needs his Greaves. I could definitely agree with that because he has his Global Silence and a Night Stalker. Um, but Shadow Demon looks like he's going to go for what Aether Lens. Hmm. He could have had a medallion with that. Medallion, maybe um, they can get a kill. But Paparazzi also popped his BKB very early on in the fight, which is great for them. No, ch very little chance of a. So we also have him going for the Aghanim Scepter, um, at least for now for Paparazzi, and it's sort of speaking to what each of these heroes' roles is going to be going forward. Like Razor, that one that just steps forward, tries to take down those Tier 3 towers after they win a fight. Um, Eye of the Storm cooldown, you know, 60 seconds, it's not too long. Maybe there's even a possibility that you could use it in a fight and then afterwards have it for a push. Wow. I, I would actually be surprised if he did the Scepter. Scepter's good if you're going high ground or if you're going to get a lot of value out of the Eye of the Storm. But there's like so many illusions in the fight that a lot of times it's actually not going to be any. Oh, Sakata though, he didn't end up getting oh anything off God. there. What the heck? Oof, he got blown up so fast. And he doesn't have buyback. He bought, oh, he just finished it now. Yeah, the GPM talent doing enough for him to get it. That would have been disastrous if he didn't have buyback right there. But Empire now maybe looking to force this buyback. We'll see if they can indeed do that. Paparazzi is there. He's the next one to get jumped on. They end up pulling back in one. This is a decent target to pick up. It is going to be the Kunkka Roger. He got the boat off, though, at least for the moment. Super and Dog fights down on the low ground, but Roger looks to be the one that ends up getting taken down. Buyback from the DK, and the blink away from Ghost Stick means the rest of Empire should escape. Pretty worth only losing your Kunkka. Uh, I think he did lose the gem, I want to say. Yeah, I think he lost his gem. 
this has tended to be the issue with IGV that we've seen in these qualifiers is there are a couple games where they did really well um, and people were telling me about this and then they would uh, end up like going high ground and then not having buyback or they would like you know pull themselves back into it and then they would you know lose a couple of heroes just sort of seemingly at random and it feels like it's kind of the crutch that they, they've been playing with like that. oh yeah I'll put that too. Like, oh yeah paparazzi just caught got caught out with the buyback and they just lose the game yeah, okay, that's uh, the anti comeback, but it does happen. Well, except really. <laughs> you're, you're not loving it. Are you, are you thinking it could be. I mean, I'm, just, I'm mostly curious why. Like, I think normally, like, the other items scale a lot better. You're hitting so hard uh, this, later in, this late into the game, he's going to be 25 soon, too, so he'll have the plus 14 static link. And then you want. Damage that like you want items that like augment your damage. I don't think the minus armor on either storm is that great because illusions take more damage than PL himself, so they're always going to be lower than the main PL generally. I would say he so, does. They, they did get that change now where it focuses the target, target that you're linked. linked. Yeah, so it's it's just hard to link these targets though. You have two heroes with uh, Link and Sphere, and you don't really want to go on anyone else. I guess maybe the Legion Commander he can do, but I think Legion Commander is just going to die so fight. That you won't get too much value out of the item storm. Whereas, like, if you link someone, you have 500 damage. You have butterfly. Your damage increase is tremendous. Oh, but, well, it's it is good for the eventual case where they do need to go up to high ground. So there is something. He is going to go for the scepter too. I, I wonder if too. that means he ends up going for the attack range. Oh no, he's still probably going to go for the static link. Static still, link I'm damage sure. still is so good. <laughs> All right, well, IGV looking to try and take this fight. These are a bunch of illusions that are here. Do they spot out the real resolution, though? They see that he's there. They're immediately going to be able to jump back and doppelganger away, though. Now they have been able to catch on to him for the moment. The duel comes down onto IGV in July. He is going to fall. Paparazzi now the one that's being focused. Can they kill off the big bad razor, though? Not sure if it's going to happen, as they have been able to get the disruption off to save that Ghost Stick Legion Commander. Now Roger getting ran at. Ghost Stick comes back in. And it looks like Sakata is going to be the one that's going to be controlled and most likely killed off as the rest of IGV force back that last second disruption, saving lives. Wow. Big of stuff. course, Rezo gets the doppelganger off before they jump over. Of course. <laughs> well played. And that's the Dragonite buyback. And this should be significant structural damage. All yeah. these defensive. De like just the boat and defensive corruption, press the attack, the greaves, just all these things that help out each other. Like even if they do get the jump on Brezzo, probably not even that important because they could just immediately press the attack. It would have been a much tougher fight. But it was much, at, at least a more promising initial start. Oh, they're gonna have to make some type of defense without the Dragonite here, most likely. Maybe they just try and hold on to that last set of barracks themselves. These two are certainly gone. You have a Butterfly that's now been delivered to Resolution, or it hasn't been delivered yet, but it is coming right now on the Courier. Ways to stop this are becoming few and far between. Oh man, a lot of damage. They're gonna pull back in one, no. Immediately press the attack off, and in July, caught again with the duel. He is going to drop, most assuredly, three dead. IGV crumbling, as there's just been too much damage coming out from the Phantom Lancer, and Paparazzi, a couple more hits from Marana, will not find the kill. Super getting dove inside the fountain. Resolution doesn't give a damn. It is all over for IGV in game number one. GG. The supports on Empire played extremely well. They secured FN's lane. They made sure Rezo had a really good game. And I think they outplayed the Night nice Stalker uh, throughout most of the game, too. And they also dealt with Angel Lines bad. So overall, it seems like IG Vitality. I don't know. I, I don't think they play PL themselves. And not being PL players probably hurts them because they don't actually know how to deal with them. Yeah. Because they do not. <laughs> <Deal with Rezo. laughs> I didn't game. deal with him. I want to see his damage done in the game. Oh, it was insane. No no doubt about it. 30,000. 30,000? Not bad. Not bad for a PL. Um, and again, it just it speaks to like such a, a crazy place that Dota's in right now. The fact that this is a hero that's been gone all year long. And then all of a sudden it comes out at TI again. And people are like, yeah, we should have been playing this the whole time. What the hell? Yep. Um, 
It's crazy. Well, game number two right around the corner, everybody. IGV facing off against Team Empire. Again, really important matches for both of these teams. This is going to push Empire up to six and seven, I believe, while IGV are going to be at five and six. So if they win the next match again, Team Empire, they'll be tied with IGV and still have an opportunity to break into that upper bracket if TNC give them a little bit of help by dropping a few games here and there. So stay tuned. Lyrical, Merlini, your two casters. We'll be back in a few.